Good afternoon everyone, it's David Schlothauer here with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion on our disturbance approaching the Windward Islands for July the 30th, 2024 on this Tuesday. So here's a look at the latest GOES-16 True Color Visible Satellite Imagery provided by Dr. Levi Cowan at tropicaltidbits.com. There's a link in the description below this video. And as we do take a look at the disturbance here on the satellite imagery, you can see it is located and getting closer and closer to the northern windward islands like the U.S., British Virgin Islands, Antigua, as well as Puerto Rico over here, and then eventually the Dominican Republic. And of course, our friends living in the Bahamas and Florida really need to be watching this system closely because there is some indication now that this could undergo more significant tropical development in the next five to eight days. This is what it looks like on the National Hurricane Center, your seven day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida. And they give this now a 60% chance of tropical development. That's on the cusp of a high chance of this system. And they do state here, a large tropical wave centered several hundred miles east of the Lesser Antilles is producing limited shower activity due to environmental dry air. Conditions are forecasted to become a little more conducive for tropical development over the warmer waters of the southwestern Atlantic Ocean and a tropical depression could form later this week while the system is in the vicinity of the Greater Antilles and the Bahamas. Interest in the Greater Antilles the Bahamas and the southeastern United States need to monitor the progress of this system. This again has a 60% chance of tropical development. Now I briefly want to do a brief quick pit stop in the eastern Pacific because we have three areas to watch right now. While these areas are not going to be impacting Mexico at all, they're moving away from land, it is worth talking about really quickly in this video that there are two areas here that both have a high chance of tropical development, and one of those areas has a pretty significant chance of becoming the first hurricane of the East Pacific season. Not only that, maybe a major hurricane on the deck of cards as well with this second disturbance that we won't be looking at in today's video, but just take my word on it. It could be a big problem out there for shipping interests. And then we have a 40% chance west of that. Now back over the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Southwestern Atlantic we go here. This is the latest 06Z EPS or Ensemble Prediction System from the European model. This is really important because this gives us a possible outcome, 50 possible outcomes or 51 because you include the control member here and basically the atmosphere gets tweaked 51 different times and each time it's tweaked just a little bit differently, we get a different outcome. So this gives us the what ifs, like what if it goes further west or what if it goes further east or what if it's a little faster, what if it's a little slower. So this kind of gives us that um, analyzation. Because we have a lot of uncertainty in a deterministic forecast, we are not going to be showing any sort of any deterministic forecast in today's video because it causes a lot of confusion and I'm worried and I'm just in my own concern it might cause a little bit of panic because you might rely on one model and that is not likely the true one like the GFS showing a major hurricane hitting floor or hitting Texas I mean come on GFS all right, so let's take a look here at the EPS or Ensemble Prediction System. We're just going to fast forward this to day three, and we do have some members over here that do indicate we could have a low-grade tropical depression in about three days. I mean, very low at the most, 25, maybe 30 mile an hour tropical depression, bringing a lot of rainfall to these areas. Keep that in mind. It's going to be a moisture um, type rich system, but at the same time, there's some dry air getting infiltrated due to some shear from the northwest that might disrupt the inner core just a little bit at, um, at first. Now, as we go into day four, we can see that the ensemble prediction system does show more intense um, outcomes here. These numbers do indicate what the pressure will be. So this is a 1,003 millibar member here. This is a 900 and wait, 1,000 something millibar um, member. 
So you got these different members that show different things. As we go forward in time, out to day five, we can see there is a cl cloud of possible outcomes and the cloud of possible outcomes is still in this area right now. None of these move this into the Gulf of Mexico. So if you all are wishing uh, or willy washing, wishy washy, oh, we're gonna get a landfall in Louisiana from the GFS. The, the GFS is a huge outlier. The Canadian has been recorrected. The icon is over here. And now the GFS is right down in the middle or not the GFS, the European model, I should say, excuse me there. I'm sorry for the wording. So there is consistency in today's forecast that somewhere rather the Bahamas and easternmost Florida will likely get or could, well, likely over the Bahamas and might get impacted over Florida. Now going forward to the very end of the forecast, this is a day six forecast. This is for Monday early morning, August the 5th, and we can see uh, faster members have this to the northwest and slower members have this closer to Florida and more intense. And in other words, if this does move a little slower than what our models are showing, this could get a little stronger than what is believed on the European model, but it still would likely be over here in this zone over Florida, the Bahamas, or just off the coast of Florida. Still enough to bring a lot of impacts such as heavy rain, gusty winds, and some storm surge and possibly some high surf. There's more than one way to visualize this. This is on the ensemble forecast. These are the track members from the 06Z run. And we can see again that cloud of possible outcomes is still just off the coast of Florida and over the Bahamas here, showing a low grade tropical storm with winds of about 40 miles an hour. So my forecast there hasn't changed since yesterday's video. Now, if this does make a turn a little bit too, a uh, little bit earlier, that's because early on they do show faster development, which means the system will likely turn northward towards a weakness, which I'll show you here with the ridge of high pressure. Uh, and this shows more of a 55 to 70 mile an hour tropical storm later in the forecast period. Some of these members even take this up to a low grade hurricane, perhaps. Yeah, uh, but still keep this away from uh, Bermuda and away from the eastern seaboard, which is really important. Is this going to be a fish storm? We don't know yet because this could still slosh further west with each progressing model run. Now, the reason why the European model does show more significant development in today's forecast is because it does move a little bit slower than what we first thought. And it moves over this patch of really high upper ocean heat content over the Bahamas and just off the coast of Florida. And again, upper ocean heat content is the amount of energy that is being stored below the surface of the ocean in quantitative uh, measures of heat. So the higher the numbers here, the more upper ocean heat content you get stored below the ocean. Actually, this is more ocean heat content than upper. So you can see the numbers here being pretty elevated. So if we get a system that moves along the Gulf Stream here, this could develop a little bit more quicker than what some of the models are showing. Sea surface temperatures in this area are also really warm. This is from the University of Miami showing a patch of really, really warm sea surface temperature water, the Gulf Stream there, advecting 31 degrees Celsius water. So we are in the upper 80s in this area of the Bahamas, Great Albaco down there, right around 29, about 30, 31 Celsius and look at the waters here over the Big Bend 32 Celsius So you can kind of get an idea that if this system does something like this it curves out It's gonna be moving over some really really warm waters even over here where we have water temperatures of about 28 and a half to 29 Celsius which is more than warm enough to support a major hurricane or even a tropical storm, even if it turns out to sea. Now the question remains, what is the steering forecast with this area of interest that we are watching, which again is located right here. This is the 500 millibar geopotential height plot from the ensemble forecast from the Euro. And this is again, putting all 51 members into an ensemble and giving us an average of possible outcomes here. So when we play this through, this is the 500 millibar height map 
our steering flow at 500 millibars, which is really important for this system. And as we go forward into the next three days, we can see uh, that the short term forecast is at this ridge of high pressure. We can see it outlined here it is going to be directing our storm off towards the actually uh, off towards the uh, west northwest. So in this general direction over that uh, four to five day period, because our heights up here are pretty thick. But what's going to end up happening here, there is a lot of uncertainty in the forecast. And this is one of those uncertainty points is this trough of low pressure that digs down out of the high plains into the eastern seaboard in about four days. Because once this trough here over the upper Great Lake or the upper Midwest into the eastern seaboard digs down far enough south, this ridge that is first directing the storm off in this general direction will get eroded, the western flank of this, as this trough dips down. And where exactly, where and when this trough arrives versus where and when this, um, this disturbance arrives will be very critical. If this trough here to the north arrives later and this ridge is able to be more stronger, then this disturbance might get a little further west, as far west as, say, the coast, the east coast of Florida, but probably not much further west than that because our trough is going to be in this area at that given time. And in an example of that is if we look at our pre previous model runs, we can see that um, this trough is being well indicated here on the ensemble forecast, but we can see over the last few runs that this trough or this disturbance has been getting a little bit slower, which is very crucial. If it's slower, it goes further west. If it speeds up, uh, actually, no, wait. If it speeds up, and depending on where the trough is, will also influence where it goes to. So, um, if the trough is here at the exact same time that this trough or this disturbance here is a little faster, then it might be able to go further west versus if it's slower, in other words. So as we go forward in time here, uh, out to day four, oops, my, there we go. Out to day four, day five, we can see here that the trough is able to uh, cause a weakness in the ridge. So you can see the ridge over here, another ridge off to the west, and there's an alleyway where this is able to pass over. And that's basically right in here is where we see that weakness in the ridge to develop at the 500 millibar um, map. And that's what happens. You can see that disturbance here getting absorbed into that long wave trough to its north. Another thing to briefly point out here is the wind shear. This is a look at the 200 millibar upper level tr uh, tropospheric wind forecast. And we can see here on the European, the anticyclonic flow right where that system pretty much is. That's a pretty favorable environment, but we got to understand the system is also moving generally towards the west northwest here. So there's a little bit of shear here of about 10 to 15 knots as the system continues to uh, move over the Bahamas and then move into the northern portion. The shear, the upper level winds here are more out of the southwest with the alignment here of the southern motion or the, the movement that goes to the north, I should say. And so the shear here begins to decrease ever so slightly. And then eventually the shear could once again briefly increase from the westerly or southwesterly direction. But since our system is going to be turning towards this direction, shear should be fairly light. So now how much rainfall could you see um, with this disturbance? There's still a lot of ambiguities here on the ensemble from the Euro, but still indicating anywhere between about an inch to maybe a couple of inches of rain over the northern Bahamas, the eastern Bahamas as well, maybe getting close to two inches over North Carolina, Cape Hatteras area in that day seven day eight period but otherwise this is not a super soaker like what we could otherwise have with these systems but still going to bring in some impacts such as high surf gusty winds and some heavy rainfall maybe some really strong winds perhaps 
if models serves pop, uh, properly. Now, with that being said, I have changed my mind and I have decided to use the European deterministic forecast since it's our more likely outcome and really fits the bill well with the National Hurricane Center forecast. So we can see here's our broad circulation by Wednesday morning. Again, winds under tropical depression force and we really don't even have a tropical depression at this moment because the low is not closed. But the European model still has indications here that this is still going to consolidate somewhere in the northern Bahamas where we do have winds of tropical depression force coming in out of the southerly and southeasterly direction. But as we go beyond this, this is when the low could close off a little bit more sufficiently with strongest winds here on the eastern quadrant because, again, our system is moving generally towards, actually moving or will be turning towards this direction. So the strongest winds, the fat side, is always going to be on the side that the system is moving towards, which is the eastern side because our system is moving generally northward at this given time. Winds here about 35 miles an hour. As we go forward though, system really strengthens here uh, later in the forecast period. I wanna make sure I actually have the latest model run and I actually do. Okay, uh, we have winds here of 40 to 50 miles an hour and then eventually um, off the coast still, this would be some good news for any um, Carolinians that live along the coast here, such as Cape Hatteras. Wind still coming out of the north at about 20 to 30 miles an hour, but the fat side, the strongest wind side, would be well offshore here, but still generating 40 to even 50 mile an hour winds um, out to about the day um, five or day eight, day nine time frame. So at the moment, though, the short term impact here would probably be for the Bahamas, but after that, still remains to be seen exactly how close this will get to the Florida coast, including the Carolinas. But right now, all you need to do is follow the National Hurricane Center advice here and make sure you are ready. There is this area in orange that still has a possibility here. There is a 60% chance within this area of seeing a landfall or a very close encounter. So do not reverse your preparations yet in Florida or the Bahamas just yet as this could still impact your area quite significantly. Now, before I do end the video, I just wanted to review with what we talked about for those that did not catch this very well. Again, watching our tropical disturbance as it gets closer and closer to the Greater Antilles, the Northern Windward Islands here of Puerto Rico, the US British Virgin Islands, Antigua, and eventually into say the Dominican Republic and um, say the Bahamas. While this disturbance does not bring a lot of impacts to these areas, other than maybe some enhanced trade wind shower activity, there's gonna be more likely development over here off the coast of Florida and the Bahamas in the next five to seven days perhaps is what we're concerned about. And again, for those that are watching this from Florida and the Bahamas and the Carolinas, Definitely need to stay up to date here on the YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button right now. Again, subscribing to the channel makes you aware that, oh, David uploads very consistently and frequently. And also ring the bell notification icon to get latest notifications here on the YouTube channel. I will be going live on this tomorrow because I won't be available until the late afternoon hours. So tomorrow is a streaming version of this discussion instead of a video discussion. So make sure you tune into that tomorrow afternoon. And also make sure you leave a comment and hit that like button if you haven't already. But otherwise, I'll be back with you more tomorrow on a live version discussion on this disturbance.